All right, so it's that time of year again. It's the time of year that I go ahead and put the uh, minnow traps back out in the swamp. Three things I'm hoping to catch with them, amphiumas and sirens would be great, but my number one target is mud snakes with them. I'm gonna go ahead and show y'all how I set them up, where I set them up, and uh, give y'all some tips if you wanna try it in the future too. All right, so I'm at the trapping site right now. As you can see, it's just a little pool. You know, there's a swamp right back down uh, that way. I got my traps right down there. I got some plastic bags with some stuff that I'm gonna show you all in just a second. Yeah, let's get these things set up. So around this time of year is a fantastic time to set these traps up because the wetlands, as you can see, are starting to dry up and that leaves a lot of room for muck and mud and stuff like that to be exposed right on the sides of the wetlands, as you can see. What I'm gonna try and do here, uh, I've got, I think, nine traps. I'm gonna try and evenly distribute them across the wetland so that I get, you know, a good chance for, for everything. Let me go ahead and show you what I've got. All right, so I'm only gonna demonstrate this on one trap since that's all you really need to see. I'm not gonna do it for all of them, but uh, I've got one minnow trap here. That's all this is. It's literally just, you know, a minnow trap that you go and get at Bass Pro Shop or, you know, something like that. So basically, I mean, in case you don't know, the way you assemble it is with this little thing right here. These two things fit into these two things on the other side, like that. Then you flip it over, and then there's gonna be these two little things right here. All you've gotta do now, is just take your clip, push it up, put it through that, and then just uh, set it down like that. So now it's locked in place and it shouldn't go anywhere. One thing that I have to stress that is extremely important when you're setting these traps up is to make sure that this clip is not bent in any way, shape, or form and that it's perfectly set up because if it's bent at all, you know, if there's too much space in between uh, that wire and that wire, then it might pop open. So what I usually use for bait is hot dogs, but I'm actually trying something new this time. This is literally just cat food it's super cheap you know you don't have to go all out with money or anything like that I got it at Kroger you know I'm not doing anything crazy here so I'm not gonna pour it into the trap what I'm actually gonna do is I'm just gonna I'm just gonna crack it open and then I'm gonna peel it up just a bit like that and then I'm gonna put it in the trap just like that. So it's basically gonna be leaking that scent out. So I'm actually not just putting cat food in the trap this time, I'm doing something different. I read this article of these people that were doing uh, studies on, I believe it was spotted salamanders. What they actually used was glow sticks. It said that it almost uh, doubled their catch results with just simple old glow sticks now. I know what I'm trying to catch isn't spotted salamanders, but maybe it'll work with other amphibians too, like sirens and amphiumas, who knows? All right, so I'm assuming with these, you just kind of, yeah, that's right. Just kind of crack it and get this uh, nice and, yeah, like that. Now what I'm actually gonna do is I'm actually gonna take this uh, silly skeleton thing off because, you know, I don't want that to distract whatever's going into the trap, so I'm gonna take that all off. All right, so I got all that off. Now it's just the glow stick and all of its uh, glow stickness. <laughs> See, all I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna take my glow stick, pop it in there. Let's put this back together. Okay, let's put this in the area I want it to be in. Right here. Just kind of sift it down to make sure it's nice and good in the muck. That's perfect. All right, now the one thing that you always want to make sure of is that there's some space on top for whatever might go in there to breathe. But you also want the two holes to be submerged underwater. That way, you know, whatever you're trying to catch uh, can get in. This is a good trap. All I've got to do now is just stake it down. I'm just going to do that with the rest of them and I'll uh, show you what it looks like. All right, so the last trap is set up right down there. I've got them kind of evenly laid out across the perimeter of this little wetland here, this little pool. I'm gonna go ahead and come back tomorrow and hopefully something shows up by then. All right, so I waited overnight and now we're back at the trapping spot. I'm just gonna go ahead and check the traps now. I'm really excited, uh, I'm looking forward to this. I'm hoping that uh, my new tactics paid off. I'm pretty, uh, pretty excited, let's check it out. This one right here, I wasn't really anticipating much to go into it, but I don't know, maybe I'll be pleasantly surprised. No, I guess not, I thought I saw a Siren or Amphiuma, but I guess I didn't. Not much was in this one. All right, let's look at this one. Oh, wait a minute. I see some tadpoles and some uh, salamander larvae. 
there's a few mole salamander larvae in there plus a few tadpoles that are uh, pretty well matured at this point so i'm just gonna let them go in just a second but that was nice something was in that one all right this one i've got high hopes for because this is around where i kicked up the mud snake last year or one of them got crayfish got salamander larva yeah the classic group of stuff Cool, here I'll let them go in just a minute. Let's see what else is in these other ones. All right, this one I've also got high hopes for. Same deal. There's some stick insect looking things in there. That's interesting. Other than that, just salamander larva and uh, pretty well matured tadpoles. Let's keep looking. What about this one? Oh, there's a lot of muck in there. Hang on. Salamander larva, still not what I'm looking for. And what about this one? Frog. Man, nothing new. All right, this one, maybe? Oh, something's in there. Oh, look at that. Siren. Yes, that is a Western Lesser Siren. Look at that, baby. Nice. That's one of the things I was hoping to catch in these. Sweet. Awesome, I'm going to get him out and get a closer look at him in just a second, but nice, got a western lesser siren. That is what I'm talking about. That right there is mud snake food. Big one for this spot too, I don't usually see him that big here, so nice, nice, nice. Alright, let's check the last few traps. This one looks good. Uh, same old, same old salamander larva. Alright, got one more trap. This is the last trap, fingers crossed for a mud snake. Fingers crossed. Oh, another siren. That's what I'm talking about. Two sirens in one night. Awesome stuff. All right, well, this is fantastic. I'm getting sirens. So if I'm getting these guys, then there's definitely a chance that I will get a mud snake too. So this is fantastic. Great first trapping day. All right, so now y'all can get a closer look at one of these lesser sirens. They're basically just a uh, super elongated species of salamander. They don't have any hind legs. They've got front feet. You can kind of see them right there. But uh, hind feet, nope. He has no hind feet. It's kind of hard to see when he's not in the water, but he's actually got gills up by his neck, you know, that he uses to uh, absorb nutrients and things like that. You can kind of see them right there. They're fleshy, feathery gills up by his uh, by his neck. Amphiumas don't have that. That's one of the ways that you can differentiate the two of them. And plus, amphiumas also have uh, hind legs. Well, these guys don't. So that's the main differences between uh, those two salamanders because, you know, people confuse them pretty frequently but uh a good deal two sirens in one day i'm gonna go ahead and release everything that i've caught today and uh keep trapping and hopefully one of these days a mud snake's gonna pop in one of these guys i can go ahead and get a look at this bigger one here this one's slightly bigger as you can see very nice i haven't seen sirens this big in this little pool before so great sign for mud snakes so i'm gonna go ahead and let him go off he goes give you all a closer look at these uh, mole salamanders. They're, you know, in the middle of growing up. You can kind of see they've got that stripe on the side of them that kind of shows you that, uh, you know, they're in the middle of uh, development and, you know, the flattened out tail for swimming. And they don't really have uh, their gills as much as they used to. Those have kind of dissolved away. But I will say, I think the glow sticks actually did attract more of these because I've trapped this area before and I noticed a substantially larger amount of these things in the traps. Off you guys go, boom. I mean, in case you didn't believe me, look at all these mole salamanders. This was from one trap. That's like six or seven salamanders right there, man. And in case you wanted a closer look at one of these frogs, here you go. It's really cool because this has transitioned from uh, tadpole to frog. You can see it as clear as day right here because it still has its tail. But it's also got hind legs, it's got front legs. You know, you can see it's starting to turn into a frog. I think this one is a bronze frog. I'm not positive, don't take my word for it, but I do believe that's what this is. But I could be wrong. It might be a bullfrog or a leopard frog maybe. But uh, yeah, that's that little frog here. Watch this. Boom already using his legs. They grow up so fast. All right, so that wasn't a bad first trapping day at all. Uh, we got two sirens and a bunch of other cool stuff. So I'm gonna keep coming out here day after day and hopefully with time we'll get a mud snake.